Hello guys, so welcome to this video to talk about the SPSS. So now we are going to learn how to use the SPSS to, for, for our stats, right? So you guys are seeing on the screen, we have just an Excel table, but imported to SPSS. And then this is the variable view. So we only have those two views down here in, in the bottom left of your screen. Then the variable view, we can see all the variables. There are some uh, quant quantitative, some qualitative, you need to actually to tell the software about the classification here. So you guys are seeing that this is, uh, this is quantitative, this is qualitative nominal, this is qualitative ordinal, okay? And for those who, which are nominal, we even put string here instead of numeric because the numbers will basically mean <coughs> the, the, the categories, right? All right, so now we go back to the, to the Excel table, to the part of the data, and then let's see, we want to compare so I'm going to teach you guys here comparisons and correlations, of course, right? So those are the main things for undergrads. And let's uh, assume that we want to start with a quantitative variable. So you guys want to calculate first normality, right? So I'm going to, let's say, I want to compare number of carriers between the different residence places, okay? Or between the different genders, it doesn't matter. So of course, genders and residence uh, places, they have keys. So zero is male, one is female for genders. Then for residences, you know, that, that there are keys. You can always see the keys here, okay? You also need to input the keys, so male and female. And, and the, resident, the residence places, you will see north sub, uh, central sub, uh, southern sun and gozo. But then we have here the, the quantitative data as well, right? So now I want to compare the, my quantitative data for those groups here. So I will first select all the quantitative data that I have, okay, so all the carriers. Even if I have absent data, it's actually no problem. Unless you guys have a number to identify absent data, then you guys need to tell the software what is the number for absent data, right? But here in this case, it doesn't matter, so we, we are just going to select everything, then analyze and uh, descriptive statistics. And here, basically, you have the cross tabs for, for chi-square, for example, okay, but uh, even descriptives for, to calculate means and medians, frequencies to see the number of cases of each variable in the case of qualitative variables. But then we want to use this other function here, th that's explore, right? And that's the one, you can always use explore to, to have medians and means, uh, it will show everything as well. But here, I'm going to calculate the normality of, let's say, of age, uh, number of carriers and of uh, bone loss. So I press statistics, the, everything's fine here. And then I, I press plots and then I need to activate this square here, right? So normality plots with tests, that's all I need to activate. So I press continue, okay? And then I press okay. And I will have mean, median, you see all my, my data for my quantitative uh, variables. And then the test of normality are here, okay? Uh, you guys have Shapiro Wilk or Kogomorov Smirnov, which is the one for more than 500 patients. Usually, you guys will use Shapiro Wilk, and the p value uh, is the last one, so it's the SIG. SIG means significance, that's how SPSS indicates p values. So, SIG will, will be less than 0.001, and that's of course uh, highly significant, which means for Shapiro Wilk that uh, we don't have normality, okay, because there are outliers, everything, so we don't have normality. So in this case, we consider the median, not the mean. You guys already know about that. If you guys don't remember the concepts of stats, I will put the first link below will be the link for my tutorial of, of stats. You guys will be able to follow this as well. All right. Uh, but here I already have the results of the normality. Then I go back to the, I press here the, the item of SPSS and I will be able to come back to the data, uh, uh, to the data window. Now I need to compare the groups, right? So I don't even need to select anything. I just press analyze, then compare means if this was parametric, okay? So now I can use, for example, paired t-test, independent sample t-test, or even ANOVA if it's for more than uh, two, three groups. But I also have non-parametric tests here uh, for, uh, for if, there's not, uh, if there's no normal distribution, right? Which is the case. So then I go uh, independent samples, of course, like, uh, I could also use Wilcoxon test if I press related samples, but my samples are independent because those are different people. I am comparing the different genders or the different places, right? So independent samples here, 
and then I can even uh, select automatically compare and then I press run and then uh, it will ask for me to select the groups, right? So my groups will be basically the genders. Let's say I want to compare the genders. So groups are genders and the test fields will be anything that I want to compare. Let's say I want to see the difference of age between the two gender groups and the two other uh, variables, right? Which here uh, we have number of carries and bone loss, but they have different names here. All right, so I will run the test and then uh, I have, and that's the result, right? So I have here the hypothesis test summary and I have here the significance value. So that's the p-value, okay? So basically the man Whitney test was used, it's even same here for you guys, and basically there was no difference for age, number of carries and bone loss, okay?